The Farmers 21 presented by Upen Pharmacy Federation Corporate Platinum Partner Integra Pharma Limited Bangladesh in association with IP Movement G Pad Discussion Center Pharma Tutor Placement Partner Aadesh Partner Aadesh Nalikar Academic Partner Academic University Dr D Y Patil Dr D Y Patil RK University GH Rai Soni University Vishnu Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research Parul University KB Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research Pramukh Swami Science and HD Patel Arts College Sri Kokila Ben Karsan Bhai Patel Girls Science College Sri Ram Krishna Institute of Applied Science Teams College of Pharmacy VV Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences University of Sciences and Technology KGR Institute of Technology and Management Farooqia College of Pharmacy in alliance with PK Classes Pharma Utility News Wave KB Labs Nanotwa Bol Hindustan Voice of Vadodara Assalamualaikum Sure Good evening to all of you and welcome to Pharma News 21 First, let me introduce myself. My name is Kavya Pratap from SN Coordinator of Operant Pharmacy Progression. I will be responsible for hosting this virtual PTEC conference on the next festival. Before we go ahead, I would like to briefly introduce about Armanes 21. Armanes 21 as an international conference welcome personnel from plethora of industries such as pharmaceutical, regulatory, academia, research, and many others that focus on the betterment of health care si- health care system and for pharma professional to be organizing this conference providing a platform at accessibility to emerging leaders and youth of the society to explore their future the theme of harmonies 2021 is data science computational tools artificial intelligence and more novel technologies evolution and contribution in pharmaceutical research it has a series of conference inviting dynamic speaker from around the globe and such a competitions e quiz competition e poster presentation video making etc and students have chance to win 10.51 lakh rupees grand winner will be selected for international action program by operant pharmacy federation now moving ahead i'm glad glad to welcome our speaker Dr. Kamla Pathak, ma'am. Dr. Nazme, God, ma'am. We are glad you could be here today to share your insights on 3D printing technology and pharmaceutical application and beta amino acid building blocks for pharmaceuticals. And now I would like to invite Dr. Kali Rajan sir to introduce our dynamic speaker. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Pratap. I am Dr. Kali Rajan, Assistant Professor from JSS College of Pharmacy, Uti. It's my privilege to introduce Dr. Kamla Padak. She is a Dean and Professor in uh, Faculty of Pharmacy, Uttar Pradesh University of Medical Sciences, Uttar Pradesh, India. So, Professor Kamla Padak has graduate and po- postgraduate in pharmaceutics from University Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Punjab University, Chandigarh. she earned her doctorate in pharmacy in the year 1991 from the same institute with a teaching and a research experience of more than 30 years she is currently working as dean and professor faculty of pharmacy uttar pradesh university of medical science uttar pradesh india she is a member of various professional bodies and she is actively engaged in research on oral controlled or modulated or targeted and topical drug delivery systems she has over 270 publications in the national and international reputed journals uh, she also has three patents uh, three books and 16 book chapters in his credit so more than a 180 abstract of papers presented in various uh, scientific forums she is also a reviewer in many national and international journals in the field of pharmaceutics she has h index of 31 in uh, scopus and 40 from uh, google scholar and uh, she, ha- she has served as me- member editorial advisory committee in the uh, apps pharmaceutical science and technology 
she has handled various research projects and guided many phds and more than uh, 120 post graduate thesis uh, in his credit she received many awards like dr r l nikor award in 2012 best research paper in pharmaceutics award and eminent teacher award and nirali inspiring uh, former professor personality award research excellent award etc so he uh, co-authored in many poster presentation at uh, national pharmacy conferences held in india and abroad she is uh, also associated with indian pharmaceutical industry in capacity of uh, scientific consultant he is uh, serving as a reviewer on uh, many science project uh, knowledge foundation in sweden and israel science foundation he is an uh, invited member in american nano uh, society she has uh, participated in various national and international seminars conferences in various capacities uh, of organizers invited speaker and chairperson uh, etc recently she has been enlisted uh, in top 2% indian scientist in the subsection for pharmacology and pharmacy so with this uh, which is listed by stanford university so with this uh, free, brief introduction i invite uh, dr kamla padak to deliver a, a lecture on the topic 3d printing technology and pharmaceutical applications so thank you very much uh, thank you dr raj gopal for the nice introduction and uh, i am also thankful to dr vikram choudhury for giving me an opportunity to be a speaker in this platform uh, and uh, i will i greet all the participants who are present in this webinar and a very good evening to all of you from india so let me first share the screen Dr Vikram is the screen visible Dr Vikram Yes madam go ahead Okay So I'll be speaking on the 3D printing uh, technology and its pharmaceutical applications See first is what is 3D printing Basically 3D printing is a layer by layer production of 3D objects from digital designs So in pharmaceutical industries we produce tablets and capsules using a formula and the machinery the physical designs are used but 3d uh, printing is basically layer by layer production of these dosage forms from digital designs and basically it is a field where uh, which is a confluence of chemistry optics and robotics research and more than 30 years ago it was used to facilitate the creation of prototypes from uv cured resin and quickly these resins were used in the automotive industry aerospace and consumer goods industries now in pharmaceutical manufacturing it gained uh, attention when the first fda approval of the 3d printed product was achieved or designated in august 2015 so it is was it was in the year 2015 that 3d printing was actually in pharmaceutical manufacturing and then this led to a uh, trigger of research interest in 3d printed products in pharmacy now what is 3d printing for this we we'll, i have given a figure that first you have to make a design on the computer and that design is in the form of 3d cad file this 3d cad file is then converted into dot slt file this dot slt file is then Uh, converts it into this is basically a machine readable format that is the machine can read what the format is and you can see the slt file is layer by layer design so the it, 
the 3d cad file is converted into layer by layer dot and then it is uh, subjected to am process to get the final object now i'll explain this one by one see the design means the intended product design is digitally rendered that is you have to first make it on the computer then the designs can be rendered in 3d with computer aided drug design software or it can be done in 2d so either the design can be 3d design on computer or a 2d design in the computer then this design is converted into a machine readable format and that is what is conversion of cad file to dot slt file so 3d designs are typically converted into stl file format which describes the external surface of the 3d model printable layers and into layer by layer and this layer by layer to facilitate the printing process and then the printing is done where the raw materials are added and solidified in an automatic layer by layer manner to produce the desired product so this is where actually the printing is being done we need a 3d printer for this so the file which has been generated in the computer is then converted into a 3d project so after printing the products may require drying sintering polishing or other post processing steps at this stage the unprinted material may be harvested and recycled for continuous continued use in the printing so these are the on the computer into the paper likewise we have inkjet sorry to interrupt you ma your voice is not audible right now Sorry for the interruption. So still connect shortly. So if you have any queries, kindly post your uh, questions in chat box. So due to some network issue, she is not able to connect now. So please stay on the line.
Dr. Patrick has uh, disconnected due to some connectivity issues. So she will be joining soon. This is Dr. Zareen Dilawar Hussain, MD and CEO of Integro Pharma Limited. I'm sending my best wishes to Pharma Nest 21 International Virtual E-Tech Fest, uh, which is going to commence on the 18th and end on the 26th of April. This time, I'm sending my message from sunny California. So a very good morning to all of you. Vikram is a very dynamic person and he is showing us the way that even though there is this pandemic, lockdown, but life has to go on. So he is kind of paving the way that uh, we need to have fellowship, we need to meet people around the world, we need to mingle and share our ideas. So. I just, I'm amazed by his uh, endeavor and I'm amazed by his uh, determination. He's very much focused. However, I have come to know that there is a prize of 4.5 lakhs INR through quiz and I will urgently ask young pharmacist students to participate um, and win this prize and whoever wins it my heartiest congratulations in advance to all of you. Another thing is, this is a promise uh, which I've made to Vikram and a promise made to myself that wherever I am in this world, Dr. Zareen and Integral Pharma will be affiliated with Open Pharmacy Federation. And I'm here to stay and I'm wishing a huge, huge success for this great uh, festival that is taking place and in spite, as I said, in spite of this pandemic, uh, it is a huge step. So we are getting used to, to the new normal. This is a virtual conference, but nevertheless, it's still taking place. So big, a big hand for Vikram, big hand for Open Pharmacy Federation. Thank you so much and stay safe, stay blessed. Thank you. Dr. Nazme, are you ready for the session? You are muted. You are muted, Dr. Nazme. Do you have my sound? So, uh, can we continue your session? Yes, I can share my uh, presentation. Yes. Due to some bad weather, Dr. Patak is unable to join with us. And today we are having 
another speaker with us, Dr. Nazme God Nosari from Al Jahara University, Tehran, Iran. Dr. Nazme has completed her PhD in microbi microbial biotechnology from Al Jahara University, Tehran, Iran, and she is a good researcher in the microbial biotechnology at Ford C University, Marshad, Iran. Now, I request to Dr. Nazmi to continue our today's session on beta amino acids, a building blocks for pharmaceuticals. Over to Dr. Nazmi. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vikram, for nice introduction. Uh, now, just a moment. Okay, um, do you have the screen now? Is the screen? Yes, okay? yes, but yes, yes. Okay. Can you go to the full okay. presentation mode? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, Dr. Nazme, can you go to full presentation mode? Yes. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Hi, Thank everyone. you. My name is Najma Noshahri. Welcome. My name is uh, Najma Noshahri. I'm from Iran and uh, I'm PhD in microbial biotechnology. Uh, I'm a uh, I'm going to speak about beta amino acids uh, as a building block of pharmaceutical. Okay, at first, uh, we should know what is beta amino acid. Uh, actually, uh, there is a big difference between alpha amino acid and beta amino acid. As you can see, uh, alpha amino acid uh, has the amino group in alpha atom, uh, alpha carbon atoms, but uh, about the beta amino acid, the amino group uh, located uh, on the other side. I mean that uh, it is not in alpha carbon atoms. Uh, there is a growth about the uh, marketing of the unnatural amino acid like beta amino acid. It is estimated by, uh, by market research future that uh, uh, around the $9,000 million uh, is uh, uh, the outcome of the uh, unnatural amino acid in 2023. So uh, at first, uh, we should compare the price of the amino acid. You can see that the Alpha amino acid uh, around 100 uh, gram is around uh, 88 euros, but about the beta alanine, uh, one gram is around 72 euros. Uh, so there is a big difference about the price of this kind of amino acid. About phenyl alanine, we can saw the same uh, five gram of uh, beta phenyl alanine is around 65 euros, but uh, uh, alpha phenyl alanine is around 110 euros uh, in uh, 100 grams. So, uh, Unnatural amino acid like beta alanine are uh, more expensive than natural amino acid. In anti pure amino, beta amino acid are essential precursor of various pharmaceutical and agrochemical and other industrial important chemicals. So uh, there is a lot of pay attention about uh, this uh, beta amino acid nowadays. There is uh, some uh, natural beta amino acid in the nature, but uh, there are not as abundant uh, in nature as alpha amino acids. So um, 
the famous uh, beta amino acids are taxol, as you can see. There is a, a beta amino acid uh, in the red uh, one, and uh, it is uh, from one three. And uh, there is uh, another uh, famous uh, beta amino acid. Uh, this name is C1027 chromophore that's uh, used for as an anti cancer. And uh, also, we have uh, beta amino acid in uh, uh, micro microcystin of uh, cyanobacters. As you can see, it is a uh, uh, beta amino acid uh, uh, part of this toxin and uh, there is also beta amino acid in the beta uh, lactam ring of the penicillin and uh, ampicillin and some uh, there is an beta uh, there is beta amino acid also in other uh, uh, bioactive compounds in the nature like uh, just for lack of need and uh, tilidine and the uh, others one. Dolastatin as an anti-tumor uh, agent also have a, a beta alanine. Uh, now, uh, because of the importance of the beta alanine as a precursor of the uh, medicine, uh, we have a medicine uh, that uh, has a beta amino acid as a uh, their building blocks and precursor also uh, one of the famous one is the cetafibrillin that's used as a anti-diabetic uh, uh, medicine and uh, there is a lot of research on uh, to uh, prepare uh, this uh, beta alanine uh, with the uh, other safety uh, routes, uh, for example, by enzyme. And uh, this section, this part is the uh, beta amino acid, uh, that's the huge beta amino acid. So uh, the enzyme and the enzyme that produce this kind of beta amino acid are so special uh, and have a, a active site that is uh, huge than other uh, enzyme. And uh, also mm, there is a medicine that name is Marwick uh, that is uh, used for the HIV remedy and uh, uh, it has also beta amino acid precursor. And uh, we also have a bestatin as, uh, that's used for the leukemia uh, treatment and uh, uh, it uh, has also uh, beta amino acid parts. And uh, one thing that is uh, so nice about beta amino acid that uh, because they are um, unnatural in the uh, nature, uh, so uh, peptides and portals uh, cannot degrade this kind of amino acid. Uh, it was found that uh, beta amino acid in the peptide can help to uh, peptide not degrade by protease. Um, there are several metals and uh, especially traditional metals to prepare this uh, kind of beta amino acid that uh, uh, use um, metal and uh, use uh, homologation of alpha amino acid for preparation of the this kind of amino acid, but they have a limitation. Also, uh, the resolution of racemic mixture is uh, low, and uh, so there are uh, at the end of the uh, sentence, uh, we have a racemic uh, mixture of two kinds of uh, beta amino acid that uh, somehow uh, this uh, kind of uh, mixture can have a problem. And uh, so uh, we, um, so the researcher tried to find uh, uh, new methods uh, that is more safe to prepare beta amino acid. Bicatalyst is uh, the uh, alternative way to prepare uh, beta amino acid. There are some enzymes that can help to synthesize uh, of this kind of uh, beta amino acid, like 
lipas, amino metals, and trans aminas. We want to focus about trans aminas uh, because uh, uh, it should uh, broad, uh, broad uh, substrate spectrum about beta amino acids. So uh, I uh, choose the trans aminas for uh, uh, preparing the beta amino acid in laboratory. Actually, trans aminas uh, has a um, two kind uh, group: alpha trans aminas and omega trans aminas. There are difference about uh, that omega, uh, alpha trans aminas just can uh, transfer amine from uh, uh, amino donor to carbonyl of the alpha carbon, but about omega trans aminas, it can also transfer uh, amine from amino donor to carbonyl moiety uh, to uh, um, distal uh, carbons. So it's not uh, just uh, for the alpha carbons, uh, it can be for the producing beta amino acid. Uh, it is uh, uh, among all of the uh, different enzymatic groups of the generation of uh, chiral beta amino acid, omega trans aminas, represent a significant class of the enzymatic due to its uh, these properties, broad substrate specificity, high enantial selectivity, high turnover number, and non recommend of the regeneration of external cofactor. This, uh, this is the usual uh, reaction of the beta amino acid, uh, omega trans aminas. Uh, you can see the uh, at the, this kind of the reaction, we have the amino donor and uh, amino acceptor. As you can see, this is the amino donor, ras alpha methyl benzyl amine, that amine transfer to amino, ac amino acceptor by trans aminas. There is uh, two kinds of trans aminas that uh, uh, are R and S selective trans aminas that uh, work with the PLP as a cofactor. At the end, uh, they produce uh, uh, one of the R or S uh, uh, R or S uh, methylbenzyl amine, and uh, they produce uh, acetophenone that uh, is uh, because of the deamination of the uh, methylbenzyl amine, and, uh, and the uh, pyruvate can uh, convert it to alanine. But we have a ch some challenges about omega trans aminas to produce beta amino acid because uh, there is uh, some product inhibition uh, about omega trans aminas and uh, lack of R selective trans aminas are, uh, is the, uh, our second challenges uh, in the nature. Uh, most of the omega trans aminas are. Uh, S selective and uh, R selective uh, are so rare, and the limited number of available trans aminas for beta amino acid synthesis uh, is uh, another uh, our challenges that uh, cause uh, to screening new omega trans aminas from the nature. To identify omega trans aminas, there is uh, two ways uh, we can also identify uh, new trans aminas by microbial screening and uh, there is also in silico way uh, that uh, uh, both of them uh, use uh, uh, today for uh, uh, identifying new trans aminas. Uh, there is uh, one uh, key to find new trans aminas. Uh, trans aminas plays an important role in nitrogen metabolism. So we can find uh, trans aminas uh, in the microorganism that uh, grows in uh, culture that with a reach of uh, nitrogen. Uh, so uh, in Iran, uh, we decided to find uh, new trans aminas with a specific activity uh, in order to produce uh, beta amino acid with, uh, that are uh, have a ring, uh, 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 beta amino acid that have a ring uh, has a 
difficult to produce uh, by uh, omega trans aminas, so it was our aim. And uh, another uh, aim was uh, about the bulky substrate. Uh, in, uh, I mean, the bulky substrate uh, uh, is difficult to catalyze by omega trans aminas that are in the nature, so and uh, that are discovered now. I mean, that uh, so we decided to uh, identify new omega trans aminas from the soil of the Iran. And uh, as you can see, Iran has a different uh, weather in different side, and so we have a um, biodiversity. Uh, broad biodiversity in Iran, and uh, we have a desert, jungle, and uh, place, uh, and uh, we uh, decided to um, uh, choose uh, some places that are uh, more uh, nitrogen rich and uh, for uh, finding new trans aminases. Uh, we decided to uh, a screening and, and decided to sample in soil from petrochemical, oil well, and domestic field and greenhouse uh, for finding new trans aminas. Uh, this is the place of uh, sampling. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is a uh, um, uh, city in Iran, Mashhad, that I live in, and uh, this is a uh, Petrochemical collected near this city, and uh, there is also agricultural field uh, that uh, we use uh, uh, this place for the sampling. This uh, company of uh, produce uh, ure and uh, some fertilizers, so there is uh, in nitrogen rich and uh, it's good place for the finding new omega trans aminas. There is also Oil well in Iran, that uh, was our third option for finding uh, new omega trans aminas because uh, uh, in this place we can uh, find the uh, bulky substrate, uh, so it helps to find uh, omega trans aminas with the uh, specificity for the bulky substrate. At first, uh, we uh, after the sampling, we use uh, ras methyl benzyl amine as a substrate, uh, as, uh, and uh, uh, it was just sole nitrogen for the our medium, and uh, we use carbon uh, source like uh, glycerol. Uh, and uh, after enrichment, this culture for the three months, uh, we started to isolate new strain, and. Uh, we find 42 strains that produce omega trans aminas because they can uh, use this uh, substrate for the growth. Uh, and uh, after uh, that, we try to uh, um, choose the, the first missing strain uh, because uh, they uh, grow more uh, fast and uh, fastly. And so uh, after the uh, Choosing the strain, we continue our uh, research uh, in the Germany. We uh, collaborate with the group of the Technical Biology Department of uh, KIT University. There was a biocatalyst group that we uh, started the project to find uh, and uh, to find uh, a new omega trans aminas uh, between. Our strain. Um, there is the strategy that uh, KIT University uh, um, started to find the new and novel enzyme. They um, uh, screen microorganism from the soil, and after the isolation of the new strain, they start to uh, genetic modification. And uh, there is some whole, uh, high throughput analysis uh, for. Uh, screening a uh, new uh, uh, enzyme, and after that, uh, they uh, check the enzyme in the reaction with different chiral amines uh, to find uh, a new a novel enzyme to produce amino acid, uh, beta amino acid. So, uh, I uh, went with the, my SRN to the Germany, and there uh, I started to. 
uh, find the most uh, promising strain. Uh, at first, uh, I used the uh, orthoxylene deamine as a uh, amine, uh, amino donor. Uh, that uh, it is the smart substrate that after uh, remove of the amine by the uh, trans aminase, uh, the there is a tautomerization um, by the substrate and the, the color change from the yellow to uh, black. And so uh, if the color change, we uh, can see that uh, there is uh, omega trans aminase activity. And uh, if uh, the color just remain uh, um, yellow, uh, there isn't any omega trans aminase activity. Uh, it was my pleasure that I found that uh, five strain uh, with uh, promise uh, with uh, ability to produce uh, omega trans aminas, and uh, then I started to uh, use uh, omega trans aminas in the different reaction uh, to find the best temperature, uh, best pH buffer, and best uh, best solvent, uh, uh, and uh, the um, the toleration of the enzyme in different uh, range of the solvent and uh, uh, there is uh, the uh, unique reaction that uh, use uh, s -methyl, uh, methyl benzyl amine as the amino donor and pyruvate as the amino acceptor uh, by using crude extract of the cell uh, that have uh, omega trans aminase activity at the end we can check uh, the produce acetophenone and alanine by uh, HPLC. And uh, as uh, you can see, we, um, uh, we check uh, omega trans aminas uh, activity in different temperature. And uh, between uh, the um, 25 and 65 uh, degrees, uh, and uh, we found that uh, there is a different uh, pattern of omega trans aminase activity in the temperature between the strains among uh, among the strains, and so um, we found uh, one strain uh, BAE BAE that is the uh, yellow one that uh, the optimum uh, react, uh, reaction was uh, in the forty degrees. About the pH, uh, we uh, found uh, different uh, patterns and uh, uh, BAE, uh, BAS, and BAE show uh, omega trans activity, uh, optimum omega trans activity at the 5 pH. And it was uh, really interesting about omega trans aminas uh, because uh, uh, most uh, trans aminas that has um, Mm, that have uh, discovered uh, until now uh, the show omega trans aminas activity at the alkaline pH, but uh, this uh, strain uh, shows omega trans aminas activity at the acetic pH, and uh, uh, it helps uh, really in the reaction uh, that uh, because most reaction in the uh, produce uh, acidic. Uh, um, pH and uh, so it helps uh, can help uh, uh, this kind of enzyme to have a better uh, reaction. About the solvent, uh, uh, stability in different solvent, we found that one of uh, our strain, uh, BAH, uh, produced uh, omega trans aminas that was uh, stable in the uh, different. Uh, um, concentration of the DMSO, methanol, and uh, isopropanol, DMF. And uh, we found also that uh, up to 30% of the DMSO has a uh, best activity uh, about the omega trans aminase activity of the, this enzyme. Then uh, we uh, decided to find the uh, amino, uh, amino spectrum because our uh, aim was to find the uh, enzyme that uh, react with the um, substrate that are bulky and uh, has a uh, ring. And uh, so uh, we decided to uh, start uh, um, amino spectrum and uh, we 
um, use uh, this um, reaction. We uh, use pyruvate as a pyruvate as a amino acceptor and uh, amino donor. Uh, different amino donor was used, and at the end we detect the uh, produce alanine. As you can see, there is a, uh, a lot of uh, amino donors that we used, uh, and uh, uh, the official one uh, that's a BAH enzyme, uh, BAH, BAH strain has uh, reacted uh, with this uh, um, substrate was beta phenyl alanine and beta homophenyl alanine that uh, it's a uh, it is so rare that uh, some natural uh, trans aminas uh, react with this uh, kind of substrate. Uh, mostly, the omega trans aminas that react with this kind of substrate are engineer uh, and uh, mm, about the natural amina, uh, omega trans aminas. Uh, it was uh, really excellent to react uh, with the, uh, this bulky substrate. And uh, we try to find a uh, ketone spectrum. And uh, uh, so uh, we use uh, S-methylbenzylamine as an amino donor. And uh, it reacts with the different amino acceptor. And at the end, we check the produced acetophenone by HPLC. As you can see, uh, there is a lot of uh, bulky substrate, uh, ethyl benzyl acetate. Uh, and that uh, BAH um, strain react with this um, uh, substrate around 40%. And uh, it was uh, really nice uh, that uh, this strain can uh, react with this uh, bulky substrate. And uh, we also uh, have a, an annotative way uh, to um, assay uh, omega trans aminas by native gel, uh, and uh, uh, we use uh, crude extract of the omega trans aminas, uh, and uh, we uh, insert it uh, in the native uh, acrylamide gel. And at the end, uh, we uh, use uh, two different uh, uh, assay for the uh, uh, survey of the omega trans aminas. Uh, at the first, we use uh, orthoxylen amine. I uh, described the orthoxylen amine as a, a smart substrate that at the end can produce the black precipitation. And we also use comasibolo staining uh, for the um, serving the pattern of the protein. As you can see, um, 3 FCR is a positive uh, strain that produce omega trans aminas. This is engineer strain. And uh, you can see the um, located of the protein omega trans aminas in the gel. And the pattern of the protein is uh, also uh, is with uh, comestible staining. Uh, about the omega trans aminas of, uh, that uh, we screen BAH also, we can see this uh, protein in the gel, uh, on, uh, on the gel, and uh, you can see, uh, compare it with the uh, Kumasubulu gel. Our uh, result uh, was published, uh, were published in uh, two um, journals, uh, Catalyst and AMB Express uh, recently, and uh, uh, we uh, introduce our uh, methods for screening and uh, for uh, finding a new strain of with omega trans aminas activity. And also, our uh, novel native page was uh, described in the second uh, articles. And uh, thank you for your attention and. Uh, uh, is if there is any question, I'm here to uh, respond. Thank you very much, madam, for your uh, sharing your knowledge on uh, beta amino acids, building blocks uh, for pharmaceuticals. If uh, any queries, 
kindly ask or uh, keep in a uh, chat box okay there isn't any question Okay, thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, bye. Vikram, sir. Um, Aditya, we are waiting for your questions. Kindly type in first. Roswaita, madam. Um. Ma'am, we have a question like whether these amino acids can help in any cyclization reaction. Dr. Anandmi God, are there in line? Dr. Anandmi? I think she may disconnect.
Yes, yes, madam. Some query is there. Please unmute. Okay. Uh, could you please uh, repeat the, your question? Uh, Ma'am, the question is uh, like whether these amino acids can help in any cyclization reaction for the formation of any selective product in high yield. Uh, actually, beta amino acid is uh, as a building blocks. You know, uh, it is just precursor of the medicine, and uh, so. Uh, uh, they can use, uh, we can use omega trans aminos and other enzymes to produce uh, this kind of uh, beta amino acid. Uh, it is okay. There's some how. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I hope the doubts are clear now. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us and giving such an interactive and informative session to us. It was indeed uh, amazing having you there. Um, so uh, we would like now we would like to end this session and stay tuned for more further sessions. Such uh, such informative sessions are more on 30th, 1st May, 2nd May. And also, if you haven't registered yet for Farmanes, do register. We have a uh, we have a prize money worth rupees 10.51 lakhs and. Uh, the grand winner also wins the opportunity for the international exchange program by Open Pharmacy Federation. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in and and having the patience to listen to us.